Assalamu alaikum dear viewers, welcome to Safir TV. My name is Dr. Sahel Hussain and I am a GP and over the course of the next few episodes we'll be discussing issues related to medical conditions and health and fasting. So welcome to our show Health and Fasting. Today we are going to be discussing how to prepare for Ramadan. Ramadan is a very important time in the Muslim calendar and one that Muslims around the world celebrate regularly every year. During the course of Ramadan, as we know, we have to fast from dawn to dusk. And throughout the world, this varies depending on where you are. So in the UK, in the summer months, obviously, these are very long fasts between 18 to 19 hours. Whereas, say, in the Middle East, these fasts will be much shorter, 10, 12, 13 hours. So hopefully over the course of these shows, we'll be discussing various elements related to health and fasting and how we can prepare ourselves physically, mentally and spiritually. So let's talk about how we can prepare ourselves for the month of Ramadan from a physical perspective. So as, as we've said, in the UK the fasts are very long, 18, 19 hours, so we need to try and gear ourselves up so that we are prepared for these long fasts. So some very simple things that we can try would be to set a countdown for Ramadan. So why, by this I mean we set a time and we say, now there is one month to Ramadan, now there are two weeks to Ramadan. So we prepare ourselves for the coming of the fasts. But before this, it might be worth considering, should we try and do some practice fasts a few days, a few weeks beforehand, so we can get ourselves into the practice of fasting. And as we know, it's recommended actually to fast a few days before Ramadan anyway. So by doing this, we can perhaps prepare ourselves and our bodies for the changes that will be happening during Ramadan. So by trying a few practice fasts and preparing ourselves, we can then physically be ready to go through the long fasts and the long days that will be ahead of us. Also, it is worth thinking about how do we best prepare for the long days and the summer months. So thinking about how we can do things that are practically useful for us. So problems that we may encounter will be things like dealing with hot weather in the summer, problems with dehydration, problems with tiredness. So what are some of the things that we can do that may help us to overcome these? So it's worth considering, do we have any big projects coming up in the month of Ramadan? So by that I mean any projects at work, any family related commitments, any social commitments, and is it possible for us to maybe reschedule these so that they are not occurring during the month of Ramadan. So for example, if we have a big project at work, could we discuss with our boss, could we discuss with our colleagues, is it possible to do this before or after Ramadan? Because if during the month of Ramadan we have a lot of stress at work as well, this is going to impact our performance. Also, if there are family issues or family commitments, can we reschedule these for before or after Ramadan? So these are some hopefully useful things that we can think about in order to try and make sure that we do not overexert ourselves and do not get tired and then be unable to continue our fasts. Also, it's worth considering what do we have to do in terms of trying to make sure we are physically as fit as possible before the month of Ramadan. So it's best if we try and maintain a physical and active lifestyle throughout the year. So by doing this, we can think, uh, we can be most physically set up to continue and succeed with the fasts. So some things to do a month or two before Ramadan would be to think about how I can start doing some physical activity that will be helpful for me. So in terms of physical activity, there are a number of things that we can try. For example, if we think about being active physically, what kind of exercise can we do? So this can be something as simple as starting to go for a, a walk once a day. So for example, if you travel to work on public transport, walking to the station instead of maybe getting a lift or walking, getting off one stop earlier before your destination and walking that distance to your workplace. So hopefully by doing this, we can train our body 
and become more physically fit so that we'll be able to go through the long fast that will be coming ahead of us. So what we're going to be discussing during the course of these programs is a number of issues related to health and fasting, looking at people with long-term medical conditions such as diabetes, heart disease, blood pressure, kidney and lung problems, and all other sorts of problems, and also looking at the effect of the fast on the body and how the body will have to adapt and how fasting can also be beneficial for the body and health. So some of the things we're going to be examining are ways that we need to prepare and be ready for the fasts, but also things that we need to be aware of and maybe try and avoid and try and help us cope with the stresses and strains of the fast going forward. So what we're going to be looking at in the next couple of shows is how the digestive system works and why this is important for fasting. We're also going to be looking at preparation for the fast from a mental perspective and how this may help us with our mental health and also looking at the spiritual aspects of fasting. So having said that, let's think about what we can do in order to try and help us prepare for these fasts as effectively as possible. So as we've said already, maybe setting a countdown a month or so before Ramadan so you're preparing yourself mentally then forming a group maybe on social media with your friends and family so that you all get into the spirit of fasting and Ramadan so that you're then thinking about what may be coming, coming ahead of you in this auspicious month. Then we need to think about what type of foods we eat and how we're going to eat because in the UK the fasts are very long and we have a very short period of time in which to try and eat and refresh our bodies as well as fulfilling the obligations in terms of prayer and keeping up to date with all of those things. So how can we try and look at this so that we can best prepare for Ramadan? So let's just think about the terms in terms of the foods that we have to eat. So thinking about that, what is best advised is that we try and consider com consuming complex carbohydrates. So by that, we mean food that is released slowly over a longer period of time and that will be then used by the body through the time that we are fasting. So things like grains, cereals, uh, meat, these type of things will be useful to eat. And what we need to try and do is to make sure that we don't eat foods that are released quickly. So foods high in refined sugars, and foods that will be metabolized quickly. So what happens then if we eat foods that are metabolized quickly, we will then have a surge of insulin, which increases uh, the breakdown of sugar, and then we'll consume the sugar that we've, con that we've eaten, and then we'll start to feel hungry again. So we'll be discussing this in more detail in a subsequent show in terms of what we call a healthy food and a healthy plate. But that's basically a summary of thinking about how we can best make sure that we're consuming the right type of food. Also, we need to think about how we are going to be managing our sleep because we're going to be awake for a long period of time. So what will, effect, what will the effects of less sleep be on the body and should we be sleeping during the day? So this is another thing that we're going to be considering. Also, as I said, we need to think about the mental health side of fasting. There is a lot of evidence that shows that fasting is actually beneficial for your mental health. So how can it be beneficial and how can we best try and take advantage of that when we're consuming and taking part in the fast? So these are some of the things that we're going to be discussing in the subsequent shows. So also another aspect to think of is the social element of fasting. Again, this is a time when we will be meeting our family members meeting community members and it's a great instance, great t opportunity for us to meet the community and take advantage of all of the things that will be connected with that. So these are some of the things that we're going to be looking at and then we'll, we'll move forward and discuss these in more detail. There are a whole host of benefits in terms of fasting but there are also a number of things that we need to be aware of and think how we can minimize complications and difficulties during the fast. So, just to summarize what we've discussed so far, we've discussed the preparation for Ramadan in terms of trying to prepare ourselves mentally, 
by thinking about how we can put ourselves in the frame of mind to come and deal with the fasts. So thinking about things like setting a countdown timer, maybe making a social media group, discussing with our friends and family. We also talked about thinking about becoming more physically active the few months before Ramadan so that then our body can be fit and well able to cope with the fasts. And then we've also talked about briefly the social elements of fasting. So how this will impact on us meeting with friends and family and the advantages that are associated with that. So what we're going to be discussing in the next shows is thinking about how the body digests food and how this is important in terms of fasting. And then we'll also be looking at other elements of fasting, so things that can be done by us that can help us improve our health going forward. So for example, dealing with addictions and then thinking about how we can improve our mental health through fasting. Mental health is a very big topic and a very important area of our well-being that is becoming more and more relevant to the society at large. So we know that in the UK generally mental health is ignored but specifically in the Muslim community is something that is not really given importance nor thought about as a problem and we're often told that you shouldn't be mentally ill and we are, we are then ignored or is brushed under the carpet. So this is a very important topic that we're going to be discussing in the, one of the next future shows and I think it's something that will be very helpful for the viewers thinking about how we can a recognize this and b deal with it and how fasting can be really beneficial for us in terms of our mental health and well-being. So I hope that you'll be able to join us in the subsequent shows when we'll be talking about these issues individually and in more detail. So assalamu alaikum, inshallah we'll be seeing you in the subsequent episode where we'll be talking about the digestive system in more detail and how this is important for, to, for us to consider during the month of fasting. Thank <laughs> you.